Okay, so uh, this question asks us for average rate of change. They've given us this function here. Uh, it's a cosine function, okay? Um, are you used to transforming them yet? Uh, we did a little bit. Do you want to go over that first? And then we'll do the average rate of change just quickly? Um, sure. Okay. Um, a cos function, one way you can figure out if you're ever really confused is we'll draw the original, that way it's really easy to go with. Do you know at zero what our cos, our y value of cos would be? One. Yeah, one. So that gives us our one. You can always just type it into your calculator and figure out. Now you guys are working in radians. Um, I think I should really do that. Cos still gives us one. Uh, when we go to put it in, we'll actually be putting in in terms of uh, our radians. That's why we have this circle up here. Help us set up this graph. So. At uh, first look, what that means is essentially, if we're at a circle like this, think of it like we're uh, up here starting at 1 in terms of going around, right? Um, we're going to go up by, let's see, in our questions, I think the highest it goes to is half. Yeah, 1 over 4. So it really only goes up to 1. So we're going to go up by, I guess we'll say, a third of a pi. Or we can even go up by 6. Let's go up by um, one sixth each time. Okay, so we're going to make our graph. This would be a third pi. This would be two thirds pi, and this will be uh, pi itself. And then from there, four pi over three, and five pi over three. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to go to set up our graph, and we're just going to go uh, 1, 2, 3, and the same when we're heading down. Negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Okay, now to set up this cos function, we're going to have to actually figure out what the intervals are of a cos function when it's written like this. Um, we have to figure out the amplitude of it, and as it changes, are you used to seeing the cos function when it's written just in degrees? Yeah. So, here's our function. At 0, it's 1. At pi over 2, it's 0. At pi, it's negative 1. 3 pi over 2, 0. And 2 pi is 1 again. So we've gone through one period of the function. We have to transform this function. We have to move it around, okay? So, in terms of what this could mean, we have y is equal to cos x. Um, I think you guys use a, d, and c. Yeah. Uh, so here's your a. Is your D inside the brackets? Yeah. Negative D and C. Right? So each of these deal with, the D and C deal with moving the function left and right, and A deals with stretching it. Okay? So essentially what will happen, if we're going to stretch this function, think of it like we're multiplying the Y values. Whatever your Y value is, we're going to multiply by the A. Okay? So if our Y value is 1, and I multiply by 2, yeah, my new function, the red one at least, is at 2. What about if I have 0 times 2? Yeah, so we're still at 0. So it still goes through that same point. Negative 1 times 2? Yeah, 0 times negative 2. And 2 again. So this is only one transformation. This is what we've only done with A to start. This function has been stretched by a factor of 2. Okay, we haven't actually transformed it yet. Okay, so there's uh, one movement of it. Uh, we'll go to the blue one next. Should have started with that. Um, negative d. So in this one, oops, our negative d in this case is pi third. So we're actually moving this to the left or the right. Do you know which way? Right. If it's a negative, yeah, we're going to move it to the right, uh, pi one third. So pi third, how what is that in degrees? Do you know? Um, 60. Yeah, it'd be like a 60 degree shift. Now, ours is technically being written here in. It's going up by 90 and 45. So it's actually a little difficult to move this one on our scaled graph. We might want to actually create a second scaled graph that's a little more intricate that we're able to go through. So what we'll do is I'll quickly bring up a second graph here and we'll just redraw it on. Okay, so we made our own new chart. We're going to quickly draw our second function, which was at 2. 0 was at 2. Um, where would a half pi fall in here? Do you know? We're relating it to these numbers. Where would half a pi fall? Would it be this slot, this slot, this slot, half a pi? Yeah, this one here. 
So this is our half pi, because it would be 3 pi over 6. Our full pi is at negative 2. Half pi, again, is here at 9 over 6. Does that make sense? And 2. So here's our red function from before. It's a little wider. Okay. So we've redrawn our function. Um, this is our stretch factor. Now we said we were moving it. Let me read that function above. 2 cos x minus pi over 3 plus 1, right? So because we're negative pi over 3, we're moving to the right um, a third. So if we're going to move a right a third here, we're going to think about what a third is considered. A third would be considered what in terms of a sixth? Yeah, 2 over 6. So everything we have, every point we have, we're moving 2 over 6. So that works out great because when we're at 0, 2 over 6 ends up being here. Okay. So we add 2 pi over 6 to each of our points. In the case of our graph, it's as simple as really just moving two steps over. All right. Does that make sense? All right. So we'll quickly move each of these two steps over. And we've done two shifts. Now, technically, this keeps going. So at two shifts, I think we'd be somewhere like this. Okay. So technically, this function keeps going. And finally, if we add one, it's the same idea as just moving each of these points up one unit. So I go up to three, up to one, up to negative one, up to three, up to two. Sorry, up to one, up to three again. And this guy is, I guess, at vector two. So we are the final wave. Is our green one. Does this make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Alright, it's a little confusing. So we've got to our final one. Do you need to see the red and the blue? Yeah. Okay, let's get rid of them so we can focus on our average rate of change here. So the question says uh, give us the average rate of change between the intervals in question A at least. Question A intervals of 0 when x is between 0 and pi over 2. Okay. So, in terms of this, we'll determine the average rate of change of the function between these two points. So, between 0, that would be here, and pi over 2 is actually 3 pi over 2 here. So, that's this point here for us. Okay. So, we got to find an average rate of change between those with our new function. Okay, there's three ways they go about solving these. Okay, um, one of them is to find between two actual points an average rate of change. Okay, so an idea of that, an idea of that would be something like this, where we take a peak and trough, so the highest and lowest point, and we essentially get lines going from these points across to each other. Okay, so this is using actual data on the graph, which will give us. Yeah, they want between 0 and half pi. So that's not going to work for us in this oh, web. Okay. So yeah, now this, another one where we could use is called using um, secant lines. Secant lines are cutting across two points. This is exactly this type of idea again. So this will be the second example. Okay. Secant lines is here's two major points, where they cross, what's the slope? Okay, so a secant line is going to touch it at least twice. Okay, so it's cutting through. Another type of line you could use is called a tangent line. And a tangent line is only going to touch something once. And the idea is at a specific point, what do we think the slope of that line is? Okay. So say we were here. For some reason we're at the blue mark. Okay. If we're at the blue mark, a tangent line would be probably... relatively close to the slope of the line we're looking at. That's called a tangent line. That one's a little more difficult to solve for because we only have one point, so we have to find rates of change between fastest and slowest points. Because in our question they've only got us between two lines, which are 0 to here, we're, I guess, going to have to use whatever method we think is going to be the best to find the average rate of change. Uh, probably what the best thing to do is looking for when we're at 0 on this function, and we're at 2 pi over 6.
Okay. Um, now, if we need exact coordinates, one way we can do it is by putting this into the calculator. We use this exact function, which would be uh, x at 0 minus pi over 3. We could put it into degrees, okay? So say we're in degrees. Pi over 3 in a degree is 60 degrees. Yeah, 60 degrees. So in other words, we take negative 60, because we're saying when x is at 0, x down here. When x is at 0, subtract 60, we get negative 60. Cosine, we put the cos plus 1, and then times 2, gives us 3. Perfect. Okay, problem with our calculation is I, I put it in wrong. Order of bed mass, that plus 1 should have came last. Okay, so it was right, 0 minus 60. That's the first part. Then we put it cos times 2 plus 1 gives us the point of 2, which is pretty much what we found. So we know we have one coordinate at 0 and 2. Another coordinate, which is, again, a third of the way up here, a third of the way up here, we know it's pretty much going to be at 3. Okay, We know we're going to have our another coordinate at, um, what are we going to do here? 2 pi over 6 and 3. Okay, So we can find an average rate, of <coughs> average rate of change between those two points. And then we can verify if we want um, by finding an average rate of change that would be roughly between these two points. This will give us a good idea using those two points of what our average rate of change is going to be. So in other words, we're finding the slope between those two points. So to find the slope of our two points, remember slope formula, we take y2 subtract y1 divided by x2 subtract x1. Our two coordinates were 0 and 2, so we'll call that x1 and y1. And our other one was uh, 2 pi over 6 and 3. We'll call that x2 and y2. Those are the terms. Okay. So when we go to plug that in, we're going to have 3 subtract 2 divided by um, 2 pi over 6 minus 0. is going to give us 1 over 2 pi over 6. Now, I'm not sure if they want an exact number. Okay, so uh, we're going to equate 2 pi over 6. So 2 times pi equals divided by 6, 1.047, let's say. So we get 1 divided by 1.047. And now we're going to divide those numbers. 1 divided by 1.047. Yeah, that's all it was. So we got point, uh, we have a rate of change, an average rate of change of roughly 0 0.955. It's positive, just like our slope. Okay. So from going to these two points, we went up, we had a positive slope between those two points. Now, the other part here is technically we've come down. All right. So our rate of change might be a little different here. Um, technically, we should be able to find that. So what they've actually wanted is they want between two real specific points, essentially here and here. They have the coordinate of 1. We can find the coordinate of the other. We could estimate it. It's probably about 2.5, but uh, we can plug it into our formula to actually solve. We know that we had um, pi over 2, which is that there. Subtract pi over 3, um, which is the same as 45 in terms of degrees. I personally find it easiest if we keep things in degrees. This is pi over 2, which is a 90 degrees. So that's 90. And it will subtract pi over 3, which is our 60, right? And this is the, the one with 60 degrees. So we're talking about 90 subtract 60. So 90 subtract 60, we get 30, right? Cos times 2 plus 1, 2.73. Okay. So this point here is actually a little higher than we expected. Um, at pi over 2, we're at 2.73. Okay. It's a little higher than we expected. These are the two points we're going to be working with. We'll call this coordinate 1 and coordinate 2 because they actually do want an average. We could have found two different slopes, but it seems like probably the easiest way in order to do this would be find the difference between those two in terms of an average slope. So it's the exact same idea. Let's go to another page.
our coordinates were um, 0 and 2, and pi over 2, and 2 pi over 7. Uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. Find our formula. Let's find the slope of the line. Okay, so y2 in this case was 2.73. Subtract it by 2. Divide it by x2 is pi over 2. Oops. Subtract 0. Okay. So we're going to get 0 0.73 divided by what? Pi over 2. So pi over 2 is 1.57. Okay, so that one is the slope of the line. 0 0.73 Depends how accurately you stay with the coordinates. We wanted 